welcome everybody. So we will have this talk about LTP and G kernel and user space traffic in Debian uh, by Mikhail Johnson. Please welcome. So uh, hi everybody. Um, today I'll talk about LTTNG, which stands for the Linux Trace Toolkit Next Generation, which is a set of tools for kernel and user space tracing. Uh, first of all, uh, who am I? I am a software developer at Efficios, which is the, a consulting company that's been uh, doing some a, a lot of work. Well, we're the main developers of the LTTNG toolkit, the uh, tool, tool set. And uh, I am also a Debian maintainer for mostly the LTTNG packages in, in Debian and also in Ubuntu. And I do uh, packaging work for mostly LTTNG in other distributions. Um, so what, what I'll be talking about today is basically what is, uh, what is tracing for people that are not uh, aware of, of what it is exactly. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you, well, more specifically, tracing with LTTNG. So, has anybody here ever used uh, tracing in a general sense, in a general sense, um, like strace or TCP dump? Or so, well, I guess then that most of you are aware of what exactly, well, what of what is tracing in a general sense. But um, in the case of, uh, specifically of LTTNG, so you can see the system as a black box or a flight recorder for uh, your kernel. So it will uh, log um, a variety of different types of events that you've uh, configured. So the, 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 the data that you can extract from a running kernel using LTTNG is mostly uh, syscalls, uh, function entry and exit, which are uh, well classic kind of uh, debugging uh, information. Uh, but it also uh, permits you to enable and disable those events at runtime. So you can, while your system is operating, you can add or remove the, the, the type of information that you are extracting from it uh, live. It also has a uh, very low overhead, so it can be used on a system that is actually doing, uh, on a production system that is, that is actually doing work. Uh, so it is, in that way it is different from most other kernel debugging system that are not recommended to be used in, in production because they have a large impact on the system, even sometimes making it uh, unresponsive or, uh, or crashing it. But the whole point of LTTNG and one of the core uh, design principle behind it is that we want to have the less impact on, uh, on, the, on the running systems and uh, in no way we want to have a, a, an, an effect or uh, uh, in any way modify the behavior of the system while it is traced. So why uh, would we use uh, tracing? So most of the times, it's to debug uh, problems that are not easy to, to, to fix. So when you're, when you're up at, to the point where you're, you would use tracing, it's because you've tried all the, the classic use debugging tools that you are, uh, uh, that you are used to, to use in your daily lives. Um, so it can be used to narrow down uh, mostly, well, bugs and uh, latency problems. And as I said before, it has a very low uh, performance impact, and we, uh, well, it's highly su suggested to be used in production on real, so you can debug, debug real problems while they are happening. Um, I'll rapidly describe the different tools that are part of the LTTNG stack. And uh, so there's uh, four main categories of, of, of softwares. The, the, the tracers are the, the system that collect the information. The control utilities are used to drive those, uh, those tra the different tracers in a single unified interface. 
and then the viewers are the graphical or command line utilities that are used to visualize or the, the information that you've collected in the trace files. And there are also post-processing and analy analysis tools that are used to uh, pinpoint information in, uh, in traces. So the two tracers that are part of the LTTNG projects are first LTTNG modules, which is an out of tree uh, kernel tracer. So, well, it is compatible with kernels starting from 2632 up to the latest uh, RC kernel. And um, I, I want to, to explicitly state that you do not need to recompile your kernel. So that was, uh, that is something that's been following us for a while because the, the first versions of LTTNG required to heavily, required to heavily patch uh, kernels and they were a bit frowned upon by most people because it involved too much manipulations uh, of, the, of the systems. But uh, it's been many years now that you don't need to recompile your kernel. You just need to uh, build some out of three modules and then load them to the kernel. If you are the kind of people that like to ro roll out their own kernels, you can also uh, add LTTNG uh, uh, build modules, but uh, you can add them to uh, directly into an, an image kernel, so as, uh, as built-in modules. Um, in Debian, there's the LTTNG modules DKMS package that is available that you can install on all supported uh, Debian uh, systems. S and uh, this, these set of modules are at least built, tested against uh, all uh, Linux stable tags starting at 2.6.38, all Linux RT tags and all Ubuntu LTS kernel, uh, including the LTS backports kernel. So in uh, adding all those kernels together, each time we commit a change to the modules, we built them against approximately 1,500 different version of, of Linux to make sure that they at least, uh, that it at least builds against those. Uh, we're planning to add some runtime tests uh, somewhat in the future, but right now it's just build tests, but at least we have a somewhat uh, a good idea that it's gonna work on most uh, kernels. Um, then the second tracer that we support is the user space tracer, which is basically an in-process library that will allow you to trace a uh, user space application However, those applications will need to be uh, instrumented, so trace point will need to be added to the, uh, uh, to the source code, like logging uh, statements. Um, and there's also uh, agents for popular logging frameworks in interpreted languages. <coughs> languages. <clears throat> so we have an agent for the Java user space, uh, use Java logging, uh, Log4j, and we also have an agent for the Python logging subsystem. Uh, the rest of my presentation will mostly focus on the kernel part, but the, the, the UST tracer is also available, and it permits to correlate traces from user space application with kernel traces. So. Uh, the control utilities is actually a single package called LTTNG tools, which com uh, co contains a main uh, CLI uh, command line command, which is called uh, LTTNG, and also some uh, backend daemons that uh, are used to uh, collect and uh, collect traces and uh, stream them over the network to other hosts or uh, write them to uh, remote, uh, remote systems. There are two main uh, viewers. The first one is Babel Trace, which is the command line interface uh, viewer, which will basically give you a uh, text, uh, a text log from your traces. Because, well, I, I forgot to mention that, but traces are, uh, uh, are created in a, in a binary format, that is, that, which is optimized for, for size and for speed of, of writing. 
And so you cannot just open the trace file with a text editor. You need, uh, in, this in this instance, Babel trace, which, is, which will convert it to a text a representation which is human readable. It can also convert different uh, trace formats. So if you, uh, I, I don't have the exact list, but if you use other tracing systems, it's, it's possible that you can use Babel trace to uh, import those traces as CTF trace and then correlate them with LTTNG traces. Uh, the other viewer is called Trace Compass, which is the graphical user interface, uh, the, the GUI front end for LTTNG. It's written in Java as a, an Eclipse plugin, but there's also a standalone, standalone RCP version. And it, can, it, well, it, it allows you to visualize trace, explore them. There's also analysis tools uh, that are included for like latency, uh, frequency analysis, and well, a, a lot of different analysis. And finally, LTTNG top, which is unfortunately uh, broken in Debian at the moment, but it is a re-implementation of the top utility, but instead of reading the slash proc uh, um, file system, it uses a live tracing session, and, it, and so it has a, some, a, really, a lower uh, impact on, uh, on the system, so it can be used on a very highly uh, loaded system to extract top-like information w with uh, minimal impact. And the last uh, kind of tools is the post-processing and analysis tools, uh, which is called NTTNG Analysis. <laughs> very uh, nice name. Uh, it, it basically, um, it's post-processing uh, scripts. So the way you use them is that you record a trace of the uh, a kernel trace of your of your running system when you have some kind of problem, and then you can take this uh, trace on maybe on another system that is that has a lot of computing computing power, and you, you can then do offline uh, analysis on this trail on this trace to um, debug your your problem. So at the end of this presentation, I'll do a short demo uh, of this tool. Just a quick uh, comparison on other tracing system that you may be familiar with. So the first one is uh, S-Trace, which is probably the one that's used by most people because it's first it's really easy to, there's not a lot of setup. It's a, it's a purely user space tool. So it's very, very useful, but at the same time, if used on a production system, it, uh, it has uh, a very high impact on, uh, and it also sometimes causes uh, side effects, like uh, because it, inter it inter intercepts uh, syscalls uh, between the kernel and the application you are tracing. There are also two uh, other uh, tracers which are included in the upstream Linux kernel sources, which are ftrace and perf. And uh, so I won't cover them because I don't really know how they work, but they're, uh, if, you want, if, if you want to understand what LTTNG does and you are familiar with those systems, then LTTNG is, does mostly the same thing, but with a focus on performance and low overhead. So, LTTNG, yeah. What about system tap? Okay. I'll take one question. <coughs> Please. What about to repeat the question? What about system tap and the BPF based uh, BCC suits and those are two other things? How do they compare? How do they compare? Um, in the case, I know that eBPF is uh, something that's new in the kernel. Um, but it well, it also it is also a tracer, but it's more of a um, a, a profiler, or uh, it, it does like it does it mostly does uh, statistics or échantillonnage, uh, uh, sampling. Yes, it's most it's more of a sampler than a tracer, but it it, it has very similar use cases. And well, there's it's 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 just been included in the kernel, but has it's really uh, eBPF is really an interesting project. I am not really uh, familiar with system type of uh, though. 
And uh, yes, I didn't mention that, but I welcome any questions during the presentation, so uh, feel free to, to ask. Uh, yeah, so LTTNG in Debian. So all the tools are packaged. There are two maintainers, myself and John Bernard. Um, all the latest versions of, of these tools are right now packaged in testing and unstable. Uh, unfortunately, in, for older releases, stable has the 2.5 version stack, which is as now unsupported by upstream, but we still, uh, we still fix it when there's bugs in, in Debian. Um, hopefully, well, uh, the 2.8 will soon be backported to stable backports. So you'll be able to use, a, if you use uh, Debian stable, you'll be able to, to use the, the latest and, and greatest uh, LTKNG version. And the, what's included in all stable is, uh, is really ancient stuff and I don't recommend to use it. Uh, it there was, at this time, the, the LTKNG project was in a really fast release cycle and the, the, you should not uh, consider using it. Also, LTTNG in Ubuntu, so, well, the, the, the packages are the same as in, as in Debian, but we, they are also uh, maintained. Uh, we also offer PPAs for those of you that use Ubuntu. We have uh, three different kinds of PPAs. We have daily builds that are basically built straight out of uh, the master branches, so that's the packages that most of our developers use. Uh, we also build uh, the latest commits of the latest stable branches in a separate PP PPA. And we also have a release build, which is basically kind of a, an unofficial backport uh, PPA where we build the latest package from Debian Unstable, but for uh, Ubuntu LTSs. So, uh, yeah, use cases for using LTTNG. So, well, debugging complex and hard to reproduce problem that involve different part of the system. So you, um, w w when you have a, 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 like a slowdown on a system that you cannot pinpoint to a specific subsystem or to a specific daemon, then it's, it's the kind of thing that will be really useful because you can extract uh, information directly from, from the kernel and then analyze it to uh, like pinpoint latencies, which is usually the the the, the main um, the easiest way to localize your problem. Uh, it's also used a lot in embedded development with what we call remote tracing, which you can uh, stream your traces over the network. So on a system that doesn't have local storage, uh, instead of writing the traces to disk, they can be streamed over the network to a to a remote host. There's also the, what we call the snapshot mode, which is really useful when you have a server where, which runs fine most of the time, but every now and then, once a week maybe, uh, there's a problem that happened. Then you can run a snapshot mode, snapshot mode which will uh, actually trace to a, uh, a circular buffer in, in memory and not ever touch disk, but when you, uh, when the problem occurs, you can launch a trigger and say, uh, write the buffers to, to disk. So that will allow you to not only have uh, what the, the events that happened after the problem, but depending on the size of the buffer that you configured in kernel, you can have the events leading to your problem, which will be really, really useful uh, when you uh, afterwards use it to uh, find the root cause of the, of the problem. It could also be used to do low-level metric collection. So you, we can imagine a scenario where you have a lot of hosts and you could configure a, a network streaming se uh, tracing session on all of them and then stream those traces to a central collecting uh, host and then uh, add those events to uh, your uh, other event collection system like, um, uh, well, your, your metric collection systems. And finally, the uh, well, the low, ever, low overhead top like monitoring with LTG and GTAP, which, as I mentioned before, uh, can be uh, very useful to uh, 
get diagnostic information on a system that is uh, overloaded at the moment. So the main workflow with tracing is given a reproducible problem uh, to gather the trace and well, then, then uh, using the tools I mentioned before, pinpoint uh, a, a specific uh, moment in the trace where you see something interesting and then try to add uh, some, because, well, actually, when you do tracing, there's so many events in a trace that it's, all, it's always difficult to find the, when your problem is occurring um, because of the overload of information. So it's easier to start with enabling only certain events in your trace, and then as you progress in your debugging session, you can then add some other trace point that, uh, uh, that you've identified as interesting. Uh, so I'll try to do a uh, short demo of the LTTNG analysis tools. Um, so I'll, I'll use a trace that I've collected on a system that was um, running a simple uh, PHP application, and which had uh, sometimes uh, I latency. So like the mean uh, response time was in the 20 milliseconds, and once in a while, a request took uh, 400 milliseconds. So we'll try to find what is the root cause of this, uh, of this latency. So the workflow would be, which I've already done on another system, would be to run these command line tools to gather the trace. And then either on that system on, or another system, run the, the LTT engine analysis tools on the trace file. Um, So the analysis are written in Python, so they are quite inefficient. Uh, they, they require a lot of processing power and time. It's something we're working on uh, at the moment, but the objective was to have a working system first and then optimize it uh, as time permits. So I've run this analysis on a really short trace. The trace is only 16 seconds long, and you, you saw that it took, well, actually, a uh, quite a few seconds to analyze this. So, on a uh, on a real uh, real world problem, the trace would be a lot bigger, and sometimes the analysis will take multiple hours to run. But uh, that's something we're we're, we're working on uh, improving. So. Uh. Okay, so as you, uh, can you actually see what's on the screen? I, well, hopefully. So here what we see is the top 10 processes performing IO system calls while the trace was uh, enabled. Um, that's what we are supposed to see here, but I can maybe. Well, I guess you'll need to trust me on that one. Um, so yeah, we should see the 10 top process, processes performing I.O. Um, and then...
and then we should have the same information on a per file basis. So we should see uh, yeah, so we should see that um, the there are reads to a database file and that uh, we also see the LTTNG system system that uh, also uh, has a read and writes. But that doesn't give us a lot of useful information for now. So let's try another analysis. So I will Okay, so I'm currently running the IO latency statistics uh, analysis. Um, well, it's, it's hard to tell, but I'm using a min size of two, which means it will filter out any uh, syscall that has a less than two byte uh, uh, parameter. So, because obviously when I was running this demo, my uh, shell was, wait, was waiting on a read for a character in, in bash, so it polluted the trace with un, uh, un, unrelated events, but we can filter them with this kind of uh, options. So here we see the AO latency, which is the delay in the IO subsystem between uh, in the, the delay when uh, between a call, uh, sorry, is <laughs> the delay in a system call. So between the time where we call the system call entry and the system call exit, or for uh, block IO events, the the delay between the block request and the block comp the block complete. So we should see uh, a per uh, process. Well, so we should see that we should see that there's the a max uh, latency, which is uh, orders of magnitudes over the. Uh, the, the average uh, latency for the the open operation, which tells us that some things something is uh, wrong is happening on some on some uh, open syscalls. So we should then use the uh, frequency distribution analysis to maybe identify these uh, problematic uh, latencies. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll. Okay. So here, uh, we can see a frequency distribution of the open syscalls, and we see that uh, there's only one system call that is uh, way off uh, on the latency from the other. So there's 1,400, uh, 14,000 of syscall that take less than uh, 25 uh, microseconds. And then there's one that takes over 400 milliseconds. And 
we can also so yeah, now we can try to pinpoint uh, where is this specific uh, latency that uh, that is way bigger than the others and So I'll use the IO latency top, which will basically uh, give me the, uh, with the limit of four, which is, will give me the four worst uh, latencies for the whole trace with specific information related to each of, of those. And then I can see that my worst latency is in open syscall on a PHP session file that happened at a specific uh, timestamp. And the next step would be what was happening at, at that specific timestamp. And, and obviously, because this is a demo and demo never works, I've tested it before, uh, before this session, and this analysis script is broken on my laptop. But unfortunately, I had uh, the output from a previous test that I'll just show you. So here I've ran the uh, IOLog analysis, but I used a specific time range which includes the the timestamp where I had my uh, previous uh, latency. And then I can see that I have a sync uh, syscall which took, uh, which started at uh, 12, well, which started before the PHP uh, session opened and ended afterwards. So I can uh, easily determine that this uh, sync uh, syscall was the cause of uh, the open syscall taking uh, much longer than the other word, the other. So if I had more uh, time, I could use other analysis to find the source of that sync syscall. So you can see the how you can use a single trace and then uh, extract information from it to go backwards and trace the, the source of, of your problems. And So uh, I'll welcome your questions if you have them. Uh, are the user probes uh, compatible with the one from Detris on the system tap? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, are the user probes uh, compatible with the one from Detris on system tap? So the user command line part or? The user probes. The user. <laughs> hmm? Oh, user probes. Yeah. Um, the, the so the kernel tracer, uh, the LTTNG kernel tracer, will bind to uh, all the trace points in the kernel. So K probes, U probes, uh, and everything that is instrumented in in the kernel. So we basically share the same infrastructure as uh, F trace and system tap in the kernel. It's just it's a different collector of those information. Yes. Uh, in the example that you showed, um, you were able to pinpoint and demonstrate that, for example, Apache 2 was the process which took some time, which yeah. was working on a PHP session file. Yeah. But uh, if I had to dive, uh, dive deeper into the Apache subsystem, saying that what exact uh, routine or function call of Apache was at fault, uh, is does LTTNG have a simplistic uh, view of it, or is there more work required in terms of taking the traces? Um, well, I've only showed a really small subset of the different analysis scripts, so all those scripts will also take uh, 
uh, PIDs, for example, you, you could uh, limit the analysis to a single PID in a trace file that, well, your trace file would include everything from the system and you can then filter on multiple um, types of, of information like uh, PIDs or, well, I can't, <laughs> can't quite figure them out of my head, but yeah, you, you can do a lot of filtering. And also if your application is instrumented with uh, UST, then you could have a trace that would combine the kernel events with the user application events, and then you could do some more uh, correlation. Also, the uh, LTTNG analysis uh, code base is uh, meant to be expanded, so you could, using the, the framework, implement your own uh, system-specific analysis on top of LTTNG. Any other questions? We still have like eight minutes for that, so please. Uh, is it possible to instrument on uh, dwarf symbols? Dwarf symbols? Um, I, know, I know that we've uh, worked on adding uh, debugging information from uh, dwarf binaries. So you can add, uh, uh, but uh, actually I, <laughs> I could probably uh, answer your question in more details if uh, I could, uh, I mean, I do mostly the, 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 the packaging work, but the, the main developers uh, would, would know a lot more about that. So I can relay your question to them if, you, if you'd like, I'd be happy to instead of saying stuff that are not in my uh, realm of... Uh... Hi. Uh, you said it's a low overhead system. Yes. How low? Just ballpark well, figure. Yeah, overhead is always something that's really hard to measure, but uh, we run, so well, for example, a benchmark running, uh, uh, we run some benchmark on, for example, MySQL, so we ran some, I don't remember which one, but some MySQL benchmark system. And so we did runs with uh, no tracing at all, LTTNG tracing and uh, S-trace tracing. And usually uh, the, the overhead on the request, uh, the mean request per second was of one or two percent when you had uh, LTTNG enabled. And it scaled pretty much linearly with uh, when you added uh, multiple cores to the system, while other while S trace was at, didn't have an, a much bigger like maybe five or ten percent uh, impact. But once you ran the system on multiple cores, then the the performance was a lot worse with uh, some other systems. While it, 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 it the impact wasn't as much on, on LTTNG. But yeah, there's all, there are multiple uh, benchmarks that were done by officials and from, by third party that you can easily uh, find uh, uh, well, for, by Googling for them. So you mentioned at the beginning that uh, it's an out of tree kernel module. Yeah. And uh, the way you have packaged it in Debian, you have simplified it with DKMS. Yes. But uh, uh, in the longer run, are there any plans on getting it mainline? Uh, not for the moment. Uh, keeping it out of tree gives us more uh, uh, flexibility in, in, what, in what we can do, and we can control our own release cycle. And since uh, the kernel usually uh, aims to have only one system do one thing at, in, in the kernel, there's already uh, ftrace and perf, so it would be a really hard sell to have LTTNG included uh, in the upstream kernel. Okay, thank you. I think uh, we can call it a uh, wrap. Okay. Thank you. So thank you very much.